me and also you can see me. Um, so uh, today's session is on this, this particular session is on how you can align your curriculum with the qualification packs issued by the sector skill councils. That is uh, the national occupational standards which we talk about these days. So how you can align your curriculum with those national occupational standards. Uh, but before that, I will talk about the organization that I work for, that is National Skill Development Corporation. So uh, I'll tell you the scenario which was before 2009. It was mostly uh, the, the government schemes or the government uh, which was playing a very critical role in the skill development space. So mostly it was 95% of the government initiators. But post-2009, the, there was a shift in the responsibility where the industry took the responsibility. So, and how industry took that responsibility was through, um, through the sector skill councils. So, uh, we, so earlier, before, uh, there was more of input-based uh, approach to the skill development. But after 2009, when we realized that Though after undergoing, after successfully completing a training program, the trainees are not be, being considered employable uh, by the industry. So there is a disconnect between what we are teaching, what we are training on, and what is required by the industry. So it was very important for the industry to participate and tell us what competencies are required so the training can happen on those competencies and therefore the students who, who successfully complete the training program can be now considered employable by the industry because these trainees are now being trained as per the standards set by the industry. So the sector skill councils which are set by NSDC, uh, we have the sector skill councils uh, for in 20 sectors, we have covered 20 high growth sectors. Um, in, for these 20 sectors, as, in, as on date, we have, we have issued uh, national occupational standards covering near, uh, nearly 80% entry level workforce. And we have a very strong pipeline. By the end of this year, we would be covering about 30 sectors. So, uh, so this was the scenario that you know, before 2009, this is what we realized. I was mostly government. And after 2009, there was this shift in responsibility where industry came forward, set standards, and now the trainees are being trained as per those standards set by the industry. So in this PowerPoint, if you look at uh, the, this, this talks about the institutional framework for skill development that has been created by the industry now. So uh, if you look at the, the, the right side, it's, it, it's the National Skill Development Corporation, which, is, which has got the target of 150 million people to be skilled and upskilled by 2022. Yeah, and this is most. Okay. For, the moment. Uh, for the moment. Okay. So just announce we are, uh, yeah, otherwise without PPT, you can explain. Is is Are you, okay. Okay. Can, okay. can you just stop this for a second? Can you just stop? That it? is your. Okay, no, ma'am, you, you can resume now. No, can you stop it for a second? You I, want? No, I need to understand a few things here. Uh -huh. uh, just a second. So this is visible to all these centers. Yes, yes. yes. Is it being aired anywhere else also? You else. As in, okay, on or, YouTube. Okay, on YouTube. Yes. YouTube live. This is live on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. record on YouTube. Okay, and I can get these recordings yes. later. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. You can view anytime. Are you? Yeah. Okay. 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 If they have not understood, do you want me to restart the whole thing? No, no, no. I just want to tell them that दो मिनट के लिए थोड़ा टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम आई है तो आप अनाउंस कर दीजिए ना ओके नो बट यू वांट मी टू आस्क देम व्हेदर दे हैव अंडरस्टूड और नॉट सो फार अह अटेंशन फॉर ऑल द सेंटर्स वी आर हैविंग अ लिटिल बिट टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम वी फॉर फाइव मिनट वी आर होल्डिंग द 
uh, lecture. Please bear with us. Thanks. Uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, I, after if they want to ask questions, cut question answer. Otherwise, in between, they will answer. So we don't want to ask question answer. We have done the work. Okay. अभी आ रही है मैं? वो वो तो स्कैनर क्या प्रॉब्लम है उसमें? हाँ भी आ रही है। हाँ हाँ। वो वहाँ अपने वाला भी ऑन कर ले ताकि वहाँ से पता लग जाए ऑफ़ कुछ क्या जा रही है। So thank you very much. We are resuming a lecture again. They can see the PowerPoint. They can see the PowerPoint. So, uh, they can, can hear me, I can start yes, now. All right. Uh, you so, can uh, so you, you all can hear me? Can you all hear me? Can you? Yes. Uh, uh, at uh, Dehradun, picture and audio is uh, very fine. Oh, perfect. Uh, we can hear. Thank you. Okay. Mic mute. Okay, so um, I'll continue. I was talking about uh, uh, National Skill Development Corporation. I'll just continue from there. We are 51% uh, uh, funded by the industry and 49% uh, government. And uh, so, so the mandate that we have, we have to skill and upskill 150 million people by 2022. Mostly that mandate has been divided into these three brackets or this is how we actually achieve that mandate. We create, we fund and we enable. So, so we create training partners as on date we have 136 approved training partners. And I would really like to mention here that our organization very strongly believes in the scale, the speed and then enabling them enabling the training partners. So uh, so the scale, the, the way we have, uh, like I said, as on date, we have 136 approved partners, which initially was uh, what, what it looked like a, a huge task. We have, uh, we have achieved it, and we are going forward at a very good speed. In fact, by the next year, we are going to be adding another 200 training partners. So we create these training partners, we, we fund them 75%, 25% of their money, they come up with the proposals and we see this, we, we, the, uh, the ultimate goal is that we have to skill and upskill 150 million people by 2022. So, so that's the vision we achieve through our training partners. We fund them, like I said, 75% ours and 25% theirs. And then we enable them. We enable them by having an ecosystem around them where the, whereby they can actually train the trainees as per the standards set by the industry. So the setting of those standards and how are the, the infrastructure and everything, the monitoring of those training partners has, is taken care by NSDC. So the sector skill councils, uh, now I'll be talking about the sector skill councils because this is extremely important. They are the ones, to, so, so the foremost task, the primary task of the sector skill councils is to set the standards, the standards. So how they do that? The sector skill councils, they do a, an occupational analysis of their sector, which means they identify various job roles in their sector. And job roles at different levels, say entry level, the middle management, and higher management and above. 
so so they do this occupational analysis where they understand which all job roles are there in the in the industry in their sector and after identifying those job roles they understand what are the qualifications or the competencies required for those job roles those are those later on become the standards so so they identify the job roles and after identifying the job roles they identify within that job role what are the skills that are required so basically the sector skill councils are an autonomous body they are responsible to fulfill industry sector talent needs for quality and quantity the quality wherein they they are setting standards so that, so after they set standards the training happens as per the standards and we ensure that the trainees being trained are now considered employable by the industry and quantity by lmis they understand how much uh, so so in, in uh, across india where all the the inventory so that's the inventory management of a skill the skill inventory management the the they are initially funded by nsdc or the ministry and subsequently they are self sustaining so most importantly their responsibility is to fulfill the industry sector talent needs or for quality and quantity as per the national skill development policy 2009 nsdc would constitute sses with following functions the identification of skill development needs and preparing a catalog of skill types so what all skill types are required then develop sector skill development plan and maintain skill in inventory in their sector develop skill competency standards and qualifications standardization of of affiliation and accreditation process so the sector skill councils they they also accredit the training partners participation and affiliation accreditation and certification the certification of uh, the assessment and certification in fact of these trainees is being conducted by the sector skill councils plan and execute training of trainers the task of training of trainers has also been undertaken by the sector skill councils promotion of academies of excellence your sectors uh, centers of excellence setting up lmis to assess planning and delivery of training so these are the key roles of sector skill councils like i said as on date we have 20 sector skill councils operational and functional we have a very strong pipeline by this year and we'll have 31 sector skill councils we have covered uh, all the priority sectors the large workforce and informal sectors like i was telling you how the qp nosses are developed qp would be a qualification pack nos is national occupational standard so they do the sector skill councils they do an occupational mapping like i told you earlier they identify the job roles in their sector then they do a functional analysis in that functional analysis they understand that uh, for for every job role what are the key functions so for every job role they'll do a functional analysis once they have done the functional analysis they would understand that these are the not so the, so after doing the functional analysis they understand what are the key functions in that job role those key functions only become the national occupational standards there is a set format in which every sector skill council issues qualification packs every qualification pack undergoes industry validation which means a qualification pack will be validated by 10 large 10 medium and 10 small players in that industry and in fact some of our sector skill councils have gone beyond this number of 30 they are getting the validations for from more than 30 uh, players in the industry healthcare sector skill council in fact has got 100 validations for their uh, qualification packs then there's a lot of due diligence that goes into it which is uh, which is done by national skill development corporation itself the qrc then a qrc happens that's qualifications registration committee it's an apex body for finalization of nos with the members from ssc and nsdc so these are the stages that a qualification pack goes through after the qrc the qualification pack is put on public view for one month 
and once we receive the feedback from the public we incorporate that in the qualification pack and it becomes a national occupational standard that means after all these stages it gets the status of national occupational standard so this is a life cycle of a, a qualification pack these are the stage, stages it goes through we have 740 two qualification packs available under 20 sectors. So I'll just give you a minute to have a look at this. We have covered agriculture, apparel, automotive, beauty and wellness, BFSI, capital goods, construction, electronics, gems and jewelry, healthcare, ITITS, leather, logistics, media and entertainment, mining, plumbing, retail, rubber, security and telecom and some of these sectors have covered 80% entry level workforce. <clears throat> so these are the sectors and like I said we have as of now we, ha we have 742 qualification packs available by the end of this year we will have close to 2000 qualification packs so that's the aim. And, uh, and now I'll, I'll, I would just like to show you the kind of detailing that goes into these qualification packs. It's very important for you to understand in terms of, because ultimately you have to align your curriculum with the qualification pack. It's very essential for you to understand what a qualification pack is and what it entails. So I'll show you an example of a qualification pack. So we can quickly have a look at this qualification pack which is helper mason. A qualification pack usually will be for a job role. So if I say there are 742 qualification packs that means we have covered 742 job roles under 20 sectors. So, so this one job role here is helper mason and there's a qualification pack which has been issued by construction sector skill council. The subsectors are building and factories, heavy infrastructure, our generation. The occupation is masonry. Job role is helper mason. See this this uh, qualification pack has been aligned with NCO 2004. So the code for which is also mentioned. A brief job description of helper mason level one. So, so this is the format for every job role, all these elements, for every in every qualification pack, all these elements will be available. For every job role, there will be a brief job description, the personal attributes, There is a review date for every qualification pack. We believe that um, that that every every job role also the kind of competencies that are required for a job role also keep changing because of the technology intervention and various other changes happening around or uh, around that and in the sector itself. So every qualification pack has a review date. Like for example, this one. It, it has already, so this is an old version, it will have a new review date. So this, this qualification pack was reviewed on 30th January 2014. The minimum educational qualification, maximum educational qualifications are also mentioned. If there is any prior experience required, that is also mentioned. Now for this job role, there are seven applicable national occupational standards, which means that, that for this job role, they have identified key seven key functions. In order to have proficiency in this job role, one must be able to perform in these 
seven key functions to be called as a helper mason. This health, safety and environment, identification and use of basic tools, equipments and materials, material handling and sorting and storing, preparation of cement, mortar and concrete mix, use different types of bonds and basic brickworks, erect and dismantle 3.6 meter temporary scaffold, cutting, filling, leveling and compaction of earth. So the glossary for key terms are also mentioned here. Now another very important thing is when you click at any NOS, so, so there are seven NOSs for this job role. When you click at a NOS, it will take you to a page. where a more detailed, uh, you know, detailed elements of that particular key function is, are mentioned. So for example, health, safety and environment, then the industry has identified that this for this key function, the trainee should be able to perform like this. So a, a trainee should be able to demonstrate and use the personal protective equipment such as head protection, fall protection, foot protection, so on and so forth. So, so these are the performance criteria. In this key function, that is health, safety and environment, this is how a trainee should be able to perform. Now to perform like this, certain knowledge and understanding is required, which has also been identified and put in this qualification pack under the element of knowledge and understanding. So to be able to perform the way the industry wants the trainee to perform, this is the kind of knowledge which would be required. Like I said, all these elements will be available in every qualification pack. Now, apart from this, the industry has also identified the generic skills and professional skills which are required. Decision making, plan and organize. Customer centricity is not required, so it's NA here. Problem, problem solving is not applicable. Analytical thinking is required. So now these professional skills and generic skills are very contextual. They pertain to that particular job role. So in case of the decision making is required, so decision, decision making for a, a helper mason, to what level it will be, that's what we as facilitators need to understand and put that in the curriculum. So similarly, in this qualification pack, if there are seven national occupational standards, for every occupational standard, there will be performance criteria, knowledge and understanding, and skills. Now that we have understood, so, so this is the kind of detailing that goes into these, these qualification packs for every, and this is, more, this is a very detailed, uh, uh, you know, it's not just the key tasks that I, that I mentioned. The industry has also very well defined that how in every function the trainee is supposed to perform and what is the kind of knowledge that would be required and as far as the employability enhancing skills are required, they have also identified the generic skills and the professional skills. Now that we know these are the important elements of a qualification pack, we can align our curriculum with the qualification pack. In order to do that, we have our curriculum we pick these elements and we put them in the curriculum template. So we have our curriculum aligned with the qualification pack. Now I'll show you the curriculum template that has been recommended by NSDC. 
<clears throat> or maybe I'll just take a minute and uh, if, if you have any questions so far we can take questions right now and then we'll proceed with how to align the curriculum with the qualification pack. So, so far I've told you about NSDC, I've told you about sector skill councils and the qualification packs issued by the sector skill council. If you have any questions so far, please ask. They have? These are the organizations. Individually, okay. Um, so let's start with Government Polytechnic Dehradun. Which one is Dehradun? Yes, Dehradun. Okay, do you have any questions so far pertaining to NSDC, Sector Skill Councils, or qualification packs? Uh, the question is, uh, uh, is uh, whereas question is concerned, uh, there is nothing to uh, ask. But uh, uh, input from you clear, uh, clarifies uh, our doubts because uh, we are uh, we were worried from where we can uh, get that proper curriculum for skill development. So thank you. Uh, you have given that. Okay, so uh, so uh, you want to know where where you can get the curriculum yeah. from, right? Okay, so let me first tell you how to align your curriculum. I will also tell you that uh, where some of the curriculum that has been developed by NSDC Training Partners is available. It's available on NSDC website. I'll give you. I'll share the link with you. You can log on to that website. You can have a look at various curricula. And accordingly, you can see whichever you want. You can, you know, you can use it. You can use it uh, as in you can uh, use it in terms of developing your own curriculum. You can take a reference from that uh, from those curricula. So that's available on NSDC website. I'll share the link with you. I hope you understand that a qualification pack is a bundle of NOSs, right? And every NOS has various elements. So you've understood the elements so far. I'm asking uh, the Polytechnic Dehradun. You've understood the elements of a qualification pack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have. Okay. Any other question? No. Okay. So let's uh, move on to Government Polytechnic. Kala Dungi. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Uh, yes, ma'am. Firstly, uh, as you said that uh, in curriculum that we mentioned these things that very necessary and according to the demand of the sector right. nowadays. What is the demand of the jobs? That what are the skills we required for that we inculcate in students? Right. But can you please tell me that what are the professional skills that we require to develop or in, uh, inculcate in students? Will you please tell me again professional <laughs> skills that we required. See, what I'm saying is that every qualification pack will have all the three elements. Like you only mentioned, there are going to be performance criteria, there are going to be knowledge and understanding elements, and there will also be the skills part. In the skills part, they talk about the generic skills and the professional skills. Right? So those generic skills and professional skills are, have been identified and put in the qualification pack. So. Uh, if whichever sector, so if you are developing let's say curriculum for domestic data entry operator, so those professional skills and generic skills are clearly defined. Once you have a look at the qualification pack, you will understand that pertaining to that job role, what kind of professional skills will be required and you can put them accordingly in the curriculum. So, uh, if you, so I would really recommend you to have a look at the qualification pack, you will have a better understanding of that. G generally, I, I mean, it's difficult for me to tell what kind of professional skills would there be, but for every key, they have identified the professional skills. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, may I know your good name? Mighali. Yes, ma'am, pardon? Mighali. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. I'm, I'm so sorry I'm doing this for the first time, so it's a little difficult for me. I'm looking somewhere else, so 
Uh, anyways, I hope my message is clear and you're able to understand what I'm talking about. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Next one is Government Polytechnic Kashipur. Government Polytechnic Kashipur, are you with us? I'll go to the next. Maybe they are not connected. Okay, so um, let's ask DGI Noida, are you with us? They were DGI Noida. So, Kashipur uh, is still pending, like, is there any... Hello, ma'am. Oh, no, ma'am, uh, previously I asked the question the same, I got the answer. Thank you so much. Me, Dr. Ritu Soryan from Dronacharya Group of Institutions, Greater Noida. I ask your name, na, Meghali. Okay. Thank you oh, so much, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. Okay, oh, DGI yeah. Gurgaon? Yes. Okay. So, DGI Gurgaon? Yes, speak again. DGI Gurgaon, do you have any questions? Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes you are. Hello. What sort of skills we need to incorporate uh, which may lead to employability in broader concept? What sort of skills are required to be incorporated? Am I clear? You're clear? I think a very similar question was asked by uh, DGI Noida, the representative from G DGI Noida. Uh, see, my let, me, let me add one more thing then, okay. and, and how we can deal with the, with, with the help of ICT, that is, yes, burning issue nowadays, even a ministry of, you know, MHRD is also promoting this. So may I know what sort of, you know, benefits we can take from ICT in order to improve such skills? Okay, so we are in the process of lining all the courses, uh, the MES courses, the ICT trades and all. So, so we are aligning them with the qualification pack. Once we are, we have done that. So, um, so, so it, it will be on a common platform where you will be understanding as to their trades, how they have been aligned with the national occupational standards. The the work is in progress. We'll keep you posted on that. As far as the skill part, uh, the knowledge part is concerned, like like I'm telling you, the elements are very well defined in the qualification pack. You just have to in you have to incorporate those elements in the curriculum. I will tell you how you can do that. So that's so very important, I guess. Okay. Any other question, or should we proceed? No, thanks. Okay. So this is the curriculum template that we have. I'll give you a minute to have a look at it. Now say for example, if I have to develop a curriculum for Helper Mason, the qualification pack which I just showed you, the first sentence would be like this. This program is aimed at training candidates for the job role of a Helper Mason in the construction sector industry and it aims at building the following key competencies amongst the listener, amongst the learner. So in the first table, you can mention the key competencies. Then this course encompasses, uh, if you remember, the qualification pack had seven national occupational standards. So this one would be, this course encompasses seven out of seven national occupational standards of helper mason qualification pack issued by Construction Sector Skill Council. So the, these qualification packs are issued by the Sector Skill Councils. We mention it here. Now very important is this second table.
Now, there are two approaches to aligning your curriculum with the qualification pack. The first approach is where you have an existing curriculum. See, let's give credit that uh, the, the training organizations, they came into existence much before the, the occupational standards, which means we all have curricula, right? We, for, for all the sectors, for all the courses, we have existing curricula. And in case if we want to align the existing curriculum with the occupational standards, the first approach tells you how to do that. So in case of an existing curriculum, which, which means we will also have existing topics and modules. So you, you can list down your existing topics or modules in the, first, in the second column here. The duration in the third column here. Now what you need to do after listing your topics and modules, you have to map them with the NOSIS. So you have your qualification pack. So based on the job description which is mentioned on the qualification pack, you can identify which qualification pack will match with your curriculum. I'm sorry. So in case uh, in construction sector skill council, you have a course for masonry skills and you think helper mason is an appropriate matching qualification pack for your curriculum, you can read the brief job description mentioned in there and you can understand whether it is matching or not. So if it matches, you will have the corresponding nurses in that qualification pack. So you have your topics and modules here and you map them with the national occupational standards here. You can mention the corresponding NOS code in the last column, in the extreme right column. Which means you have mapped your modules, your existing modules with the NOSes. So once you have identified the corresponding NOS, then you will have the performance criteria, knowledge and understanding and skills element in that NOS, which I just showed you. The key learning outcomes are to be mapped with the performance criteria and knowledge and understanding of the corresponding NOS. So this column is from a trainer's perspective. This is what, as a trainer, I would be teaching. Now, the key learning outcomes are from the trainee's perspective. After undergoing this topic or module, this is how I should be able to perform. So this is a competency-based curriculum. We are talking about the outcomes what a trainee will be able to do after the completion of that module. So what would that be? The performance criteria. But sometimes also in certain modules, the knowledge part is more important. So the essence of performance criteria and knowledge and understanding part is to be captured in this column, the key learning outcomes. So you have your existing, uh, existing topics. You have mapped them with the NOSes. So you have identified the corresponding NOS. If you have identified the corresponding NOS, you will also know what are the performance criteria, knowledge, and understanding in that NOS, which can be mapped to the key learning outcomes column here. Now, as we all know that the need for employability skills has become very important, such as soft skills, communication skills, which are mostly covered in the professional skills and gen generic skills of the qualification pack, we usually recommend the training partners 
to park them separately because as it is a lot of training organizations they are giving separate modules on the generic skills and the professional skills so they can be included as a separate topic or a module so if there are four important elements in a qualification pack namely the national occupational standards the performance criteria the knowledge and understanding and the skills we have aligned it in this curriculum by having the nosses here the corresponding nosses in in this column here knowledge and understanding and the performance criteria in the key learning outcomes and the skills as separate modules now you might also while developing your curriculum as per the nosses there is a possibility you might come across a few nosses which you have not covered so we recommend that you include them so whatever is there in the in the in the qualification pack should be included in the curriculum if there is anything missing you include that if there is anything additional that you are offering you can either keep it or in case if you want to take a call on removing it or whatever it is that's a, that's entirely the content developers decision but additional is is also one can also have additional modules why because at times to bring training to the level of qualification pack certain additional modules or bridging modules are required so so that is that that, that you can have here in in, in the way of your uh, topics and modules and a small note can be mentioned in the corresponding nos code column saying it is an additional module or it is a bridging module sometimes also introductory modules are given so that is also this some some training partners they start with introduction introduction uh, to the sector which is not in the nosis but you can have them as a separate module and a small note can be mentioned here saying they are introductory modules so additional can also be there but bare minimum nosis their performance criteria their knowledge and understanding and skills should be covered in this curriculum and we have i just told you how you can incorporate all those elements in the curriculum once you have done that this curriculum is aligned to the qualification pack and this curriculum is a competency based curriculum it mostly talks about the competency because our focus remains on the key learning outcomes now a more deep dive into the qualification pack is by the way of session plan so we have training delivery plans another courseware element which is recommended by nsdc and all our training partners must have it i'll just show you the template of a training delivery plan recommended by nsdc so if this is your curriculum you have your modules these modules are mentioned here now every module will have certain sessions those sessions are mentioned here for example my first module will be covered in three sessions so i mention the name of those three sessions here each session will further have session objectives now these session objectives will come from the key learning outcomes we had a key learning outcomes here these key learning outcomes will be spread over these session objectives which means the performance criteria knowledge and understanding that you covered in the key learning outcomes for this module will now 
be spread over these three sessions. Now once you have your session objectives, you can have the NOS reference. Now NOS reference here would be which performance criteria, which knowledge and understanding you have covered in this session. I'll show you some samples or maybe I can quickly show you this one. So one of our training partners, they have developed a session plan for Helper Mason. They have their sessions. Sessions further have their objectives. And you can see here in the NOS reference how they have mapped it with the performance criteria. So in this session, they are covering the NOS CON oblique N0005 performance criteria 8. Performance criteria 6 and 8 are being covered in this session. So this is a further deep dive into alignment of your curriculum with the qualification pack. Then you can mention the methodology here. What all training tools and aids would be used? Those can be mentioned in this column. The duration, now this duration will be session wise duration. So you have your sessions now, the session objectives, NOS reference, which means how you have mapped them with the performance criteria, knowledge and understanding elements, what methodology is being used, training tools and aids, and the duration session wise. So if we have these two elements in place, we can ensure the standardization because the trainer's guide and the participant's manual will be based on the session plan, which means a trainer would know on session one of module one, these are going to be the objectives, then how they have been mapped with what industry requires, what methodology a trainer needs to use, what tools and aids would be required, and what would be the duration of that session. We also recommend to have the session plans in the participants manual so the trainees also know that session one, module one, this is how the structure is going to be and what would be the outcomes of that session. So once you have these elements in place, you have aligned your curriculum with the qualification pack. So let's take a few questions now. Um, I will start with DGI Gurgaon. DGI Gurgaon, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. As far as this uh, listening skills concerned, nowadays we are facing such, such kind of problem while training the students. They, you know, they listen to things, but but they, they are unable to comprehend. So, what are your ways how we can, you know, deal with this thing? According to your opinion. So you you specifically asking about the listening skills. Yeah, yeah, particularly listening because they can listen to things. They can, but the problem comes while comprehension, right? So co how to comprehend it in a better way, that is probably a challenging job for a trainee, right? So how we can make them, I mean, understand this thing? Okay, so if you are talking about the listening skills in, in, the, in the trainees, there are so many activities which you can do. There are so many group activities which you can do. See, see the, gone are those days when there used to be lectures and we used to listen to the trainer very carefully. Right. I think the, the, the lecture form doesn't work too much anymore, however it is required. So as far as the listening, uh, the, the issues that you're dealing with the listening of the trainers, 
what you can do is you can make a mix of uh, of the, the group activities there are so many options so many methods available to impart training which is more effective these days like I'm telling you, one is group activities because they, they usually learn. And then if they are able to demonstrate, see, we are talking about skills here. right? If you make them perform, if you actually make them perform, then whatever you have told, uh, that whatever they have actually absorbed from what you have told, it will come across. And at the time of performance, when they will know that they have to ultimately perform, there will have, there will be some, uh, you know, they will be listening carefully. See, if I know I have to perform after the session and uh, my trainer would be asking me to do certain things, I would be listening very carefully. And plus, why just tell, demonstrate. So if you demonstrate, 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 they definitely listen to it. Right. Instead of just telling them, I would recommend that you also demonstrate and you do a lot of group activities with them, ask them to perform at the end of the activity so, so, or role plays if you want to do. So there are various methods available through which you can have a more effective uh, session. So as, as far as the effectivity of the session is concerned, you have to more, um, I mean, you have to explore the methodology, more options. Yeah, I'm sure it will help them to, you know, overcome the inhibition sort of thing, isn't it? Stage fair sort of a thing, right? I mean, through this activity only they can improve, isn't it? It will Absolutely. be better for, for them. Yeah, because see, I really recommend the trainers to step into the shoes of the trainees. I mean, wh how would you want to learn? See, if you're developing a curriculum, thinking of yourself as a trainee. What is it that you want from the session? How is it that you want the session to be? If you start thinking from that perspective, I think a session will be more effective compared to how you think as a trainer that this is what I want to teach. This is what I think they should know. So if we stop thinking like that, if we start thinking what they require, uh, a session becomes more effective. That's how usually trainers are planning their sessions these days. Exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Next, next, uh, DGI Noida. Yeah. <laughs> no, ma'am, no question. We are fully satisfied. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Polytechnic Hisar. Do you have any questions, Polytechnic Hisar? Polytechnic Kashipur? Polytechnic Dehradun? Do you have any questions? Are you listening also? You can ask them. Yeah. I don't know whether they are. Are you able to hear me? Polytechnic Dehradun, can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am, uh, we can hear you. And uh, uh, where is question is concerned, uh, uh, it's okay. We have uh, no question at present. Thank you. Uh, Polytechnic Karadungi? Okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, this is Pandey from Government Polytechnic, Kalaadungi. Okay. 
Hello, uh, ma'am. Uh, first of all, I am uh, from uh, my whole Polytechnic. Uh, I am giving thanks for such a fruitful session. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. But uh, you are, ma'am, uh, you are uh, giving us a lecture on this uh, uh, circular design and a whole and a whole that. But uh, means uh, apart from this this uh, lecture, uh, is there any practical training for us so that we can grasp it? Because uh, uh, because uh, it's okay, but uh, all of things uh, uh, sometimes we uh, something we are grasping. But uh, if there is some practical training for that, then it it is easy for us to grasp it all. How, well, I think it's. Well, some some paper work sir means on on paper we are doing something the like that there is some exercises for us so that uh, we will practice all of that what you are saying all and all so that we can grasp it all i think i think you have a very valid point um, as i just mentioned that you know if you ask the trainees to perform they they are able to grasp more and uh, so what i'll do is i will share uh, the the word documents with me so what you all can do is pick any one curriculum and see how you can align your curriculum with the qualification pack and uh, get a hang of it once you have so so you can uh, you can share that curriculum with me if there are any gaps i can let you know and uh, once you have finalized one format you can replicate the same on other uh, on the other curricula so i think that's a very valid point we can do that um after this session i will share these documents with the management here they'll further share it with all the the, the colleges and then you can all pick one curriculum and then develop it accordingly okay ma'am thank you ma'am again thanks ma'am very very thanks you're welcome okay thank you that's all okay thank you Okay, uh, the the other approach. So very quickly now, I will touch upon the next approach, wherein if you don't have an existing curriculum, you have to develop uh, from the start. So how you can do it? In that case, your nurses will become your topics and modules. And when you have your topics and modules, you will also have the corresponding nurses, because the nurses only became the the modules. So you, obviously you'll have the nurses the the nurse code here which can be mentioned in the la last column accordingly you will have the key learning outcomes which will be your performance criteria knowledge and understanding now as it is the qualification pack cannot be converted into a curriculum because like i said certain bridging modules would be required so you can insert your bridging modules in this curriculum and accordingly you can have a curriculum which is aligned to the qualification pack so everything remains the same uh the approach is more or less the same it is just that the only difference is that we are having nurses and as modules straight away so that's your second approach if you don't have a, an existing curriculum right um okay so i hope um the session was useful for all of you and uh like i said i will be sharing all these documents the powerpoint presentation the the session plan design the curriculum design whatever templates we have uh, for nsdc partners i will share all of them with the management here which they can forward, further forward to you all and uh, you can actually hands on i mean experience uh, you can you can practice with, starting with any one curriculum and see how it goes from there um, my email address will also be shared with them in case if you want to okay. share that Okay, if you want to write it down, it's Mighali dot Prabhakar. So I'll just type it quickly here, so you can have a look at it. this is uh the link where you can find the the curriculum which is developed uh, which has been developed by nsdc training partners when you go to nsdc website nsdc website is nsdcindia.org you will see a quality tab there on the home page itself when you click on the quality tab it will take you to this page where the process manual on how to align the curriculum with the qualification pack is also available 
and various curricula which has been developed by NSDC training partners is also available. This is my email address. So in case if you want to share what you have developed with me, you can do that through this email address. You can send it across to me on this email address. So on that note, I would thank you all for having me here and uh, listening to this session. I hope it was useful. Thank you very much. Just be careful. <laughs> Uh, good morning to all of you. You have uh, listened to Madam Prabhakar. She has uh, talked about how to align the curriculum with the standards. Two approaches she has talked about. One approach is when you have the curriculum available, and uh, when curriculum available is there, then you can match with NOS, National Occupational Standards. And the second approach is that when uh, curriculum is not available, then the starting point is to find out the National Occupational Standards. And you start from there, try to find out what are the key areas or key units or key modules which are required to be there and then make your content of the course or the program which you want to offer. Simultaneously try to write down the outcomes or instruction objectives of the topics or the modules which you have selected and if you have these things you will be able to organize your training program. If you remember my two lectures which I have given to you, first was on technical vocational education system, calibrating with national skill qualification framework and uh, yesterday lecture was on curriculum development, benchmarking with NSQF curriculum development for technical vocational education benchmarking with NSQF. I have not only in these two sessions, I have tried to say that there are 10 levels are there. With each 10 levels, you have certain qualifications. Those are to be matched with the academic qualifications which are there. And Madam Prabhakar has given you some idea that how in the, you, you can match the academic qualifications with the standards and uh, you have to go to the site of NSDC further, make a more studies and then you will be able to convert your curriculum of the programs uh, such that those are matching with the occupation standards which are available in the industry. I thank on your behalf and on behalf of NITTR to Madam Prabhakar as well as NSDC for deputing her here for sharing their expertise and experience with us. We will be having a break for 10 minutes and after that the next session will be taken by Professor Dhamija. Uh, break for 15 minutes.